Okay, so in this lecture we're going to cover this concept of resonance. So if we take an example, so NO3 minus nitrate. So we've drawn this structure a couple of times before. So if we draw a structure for nitrate, we can put nitrogen in the middle and attach three oxygens, one oxygen with a double bond. and two oxygens with a single bond. And if we assign four more charges, nitrogen's plus one, oxygen's negative one, and negative one. So we could have drawn nitrate like that, or we could have drawn nitrate with a double bond to that oxygen, or we could have drawn nitrate with a double bond to the oxygen on the left. And put our one pairs in. charges in okay so nitrate in reality it looks like a combination of all three molecules and so you might ask yourself well aren't all three molecules the same because can't you just rotate them 120 degrees and then you would get the other one so yes that is true because you can't distinguish between oxygens so therefore you could not distinguish between the molecules uh, but if these oxygens were different, how could the oxygens be different? Maybe if you had different isotopes. Uh, maybe the oxygen on top was an oxygen 16 atom, and the one in the middle an oxygen 17 atom, and then the one on the left, or the right, an oxygen 18 atom. Then, of course, the molecules would be different. Um, <clears throat> but in the absence of that, all of the molecules are equivalent, and all of these molecules drawn are, are what are called resonant structures of each other. So to represent resonant structure, we use this double-headed arrow. So a double-headed arrow equals resonance. And so what resonance means is the delocalization of the electrons over more than one atom. Okay, so um, so sometimes you will see nitrate drawn. Uh, so so if if the molecule looked like this, you would have one double bond and two single bonds, and and you could tell that because if you look at bond lengths, for example. So if we looked at uh, the lengths of double bonds versus single bonds versus triple bonds. So if we take um, this molecule with two nitrogens single bonded to each other, nitrogen-nitrogen bond length is 147 picometer. Or if we took this molecule with two nitrogens double bonded to each other, nitrogen-nitrogen double bond is 124 picometers. And if we had two nitrogens triple bonded to each other, the distance between the two nitrogens is 110 picometer. So in terms of bond length, triple bonds are shorter than double bonds, which are shorter than single bonds. So for this molecule, if the molecule really looked like this, you would have two long bonds and one short bond. Um, but in what you find is that all bond lengths are identical in the molecule. So you cannot dis distinguish between any of the bonds. So sometimes you see nitrate drawn uh, like this <clears throat> in brackets with dotted line. So one, you know, so you don't have a double bond and two single bonds, which you have basically as a bond and a third. So the nitrogen-oxygen bond lengths would be somewhere between a nitrogen-oxygen single bond and a nitrogen-oxygen double bond uh, because all of the structures are equivalent, or all of the bonds are equivalent to each other. Uh, but, so if we, I were ask you to draw a nitrate, don't draw it like this. I prefer that you draw it like one of the static structures.
All right, so draw it like this and not like this, <clears throat> even though technically that's what the molecule looks like. Okay, so what we want to do now then is represent how do you go from one structure to the other. So we're going to move electrons around to show how you would get from one structure to the other. And th basically this is what resonance is, is the movement of electrons through the molecule. So let's take these two electrons, move them down to make a double bond between those two atoms. Uh, yes, no, 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 that's not what we want to do. And draw this back now. So I want to get to the structure in the middle. So what I want to do, so I need the double bond to be on the right, so I'll need to take these two electrons and move them down to make a double bond there. And then take these two electrons and move them on the oxygen to make a third one pair. And if, if electrons flow through the molecule like that, then now you would have the structure in the middle. And then to get from the structure in the middle to the structure on the right, so what do we need to do? So we need to uh, take two lone, a lone pair on this oxygen, doesn't matter which of the three lone pairs. We're going to move it down to make a double bond there. And then we're going to take one of the two double bonds, it doesn't matter which one. And we're going to move it onto that oxygen to make a lone pair. And now when you do that, then the molecule looks like the structure on the right. So that's how you draw resonant structures. So for those of you who go into organic chemistry, you'll be doing this all the time. So if you learn how to do this now, organic chemistry got a little bit easier for you. So let's take one more example. So C3, C2H3O2 minus. Uh, so one of those polyatomic ions you're supposed to memorize. <clears throat> I'll be impressed if you know the name of that one. So anybody know the name of that polyatomic ion? So that one is acetate. Okay, so what does acetate look like? It's got a CH3 attached to a carbon that's got a double bond to one oxygen and a single bond to another oxygen. Oops, two dots. Okay, so the oxygen on top has a double bond and two lone pairs, and the oxygen to the right has three lone pairs and a bond. And then if we assign formal charges, so let's see, that's C2H3O2. Uh, if we counted our electrons, carbon's got four valence times two, hydrogen's got one valence times three hydrogens, oxygen's got six valence times two oxygens. And because it's a negative charge, we would add an oxygen, so that's 12, 15, plus 8, plus 1. So that's 24 electrons. And if you count the molecules in this atom, Count the electrons in this molecule, you should have 24, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 bonds. That's 14 electrons. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lone pair. Erase that. So 5 lone pair equals 10 electrons, that's 24 electrons. So the molecule has a net negative 1 charge, so where's that negative charge at, or the sum of the formal charges has to equal negative 1. So if you calculated formal charges, you would find that that oxygen is negative 1 and everything else is zero formal charge. Okay, so we can draw a resonant structure for this molecule. So that symbol. And what we can do is we can take a lone pair here, make a double bond there, take the double bond and make a lone pair on that oxygen. And then we could have drawn acetate like that instead. And then now this oxygen on top is the one with the negative charge. So then in reality, uh, there's not a double bond and a single bond to the oxygens. There's basically a bond and a half to each oxygen. So the bond length between carbon and oxygen would be somewhere between a single bond and a double bond. Oops. And so sometimes you would see acetate drawn like that to represent that. And so <clears throat> how much negative charge would each oxygen hold? Uh, since there's a total of one negative charge, then each oxygen would have basically the equivalent of half 
of the negative charge of what an electron would hold. So sometimes you would see acetate drawn like that. Or simply, well, like that. Or like that. But again, I prefer that you not draw it like this. I prefer that you draw it like that or like that. Either of the static structures, so it's not the molecule is not going back and forth between the two structures. The molecule is simply, simply a hybrid of those two structures, is what it actually looks like. So if I ask you to draw a molecule like acetate, pick one of the two hybrid structures or the static structures and draw it. The one on the left and the one on the right. Don't draw it like the one in brackets. Or I may I may simply give you this molecule and ask you to draw a resonance structure of it, in which case you would draw that molecule. Or I may ask you to use arrows uh, like these to show how electrons move to go from one molecule to the other molecule. And that's all that we'll say about resonance structures. You'll probably maybe see one example on a quiz or exam, but if you go into organic chemistry, you'll be doing this all the time in organic chemistry.